Hello and welcome to our online worship for the 20th Sunday after Trinity. My name's Jo Neary and I'm the team vicar in the Bemminster team and it's really good to welcome you to our worship today. I don't, I know that my husband Harry who makes our videos and does our social media always teases me about saying it's been a busy week but honestly when I sit down in front of a camera to record each service week by week and I, I reflect on what has been accomplished in the team each week. It's always this astounding list of stuff, of things that have happened. Um, and most of them are just what parish churches should be doing. Um, so there's been loads of acts of worship, which is great. The final Harvest Festivals, in about half an hour, I'm going to lead my 14th Harvest event. Um, I haven't led them all, thankfully, but I've been to 14 harvest services or uh, lunches or teas or dinners or suppers or whatever it was. And the final one at Mountjoy School today, just before they break up for half term. But we've been finishing off those. We've had lots of acts of worship. Um, we've had a team council meeting where we have finally agreed that we have to work better together as a team. And uh, hopefully that involves sharing some of our resources together. So that was a good meeting. Um, we've met new people, new people coming to worship, people who've moved into the new housing in Drimpton, for example, or people who've been living in the area for a while but feel pulled to come to church, which is great news. So that's wonderful. We had a baptism on Sunday in St Mary's Bemminster. Uh, a member of congregation um, who's kind of come back to faith over the last few months gave a really powerful testimony of how uh, she feels like she's come home very similar to the prodigal son story, I guess, the idea of coming home into a place where she's been welcomed. And uh, she reflected afterwards in the service, she gave her testimony, which was very moving, but she talked about how she feels safe and peaceful in church and that she is quite astounded by the love that she has received from the people in the church, including a whole church of people who just rejoiced at her baptism last week. So that was fabulous. Then on Sunday afternoon, we did something for the first time in the Bemminster team. We held a service specifically around the subject of baby loss in pregnancy, stillbirth, and those of us who've lost children. Um, it, sit, it sits alongside um, Baby Loss Awareness Week, which has been running for 21 years. Um, and it was the first time that we held that specific service. It was attended by a small number of people, but for all the people who came, it was a really good, I hope, a really good space for them to grieve, to remember losses. Um, not to share stories, although there was some talking about sharing and, and what experiences of loss people had had. Um, there was a lot of weeping, <laughs> but a lot of comfort too to be had that uh, children who may never have even been born um, were lost in pregnancy and others as well are known and loved by God and that was a very reassuring message of hope from that service uh, so a grateful thanks to those who helped put that event together our all souls service which will be on the 5th of November is coming up and that is a time for us to remember anybody who's died whether that's uh, babies children or adults uh, and to also have their names read out um, so if you want a name read out at that service, which is 4pm on the 5th of November, please contact Anne in the office or one of the clergy and we will add the name of your loved one to our list. Then you're very welcome to attend and to listen to that list, that roll call of remembrance and then light a candle in their memory. So um, please do participate if that's something you would like to do. And for our services around remembrance, of course, our online services will reflect that season of remembrance, both all souls and all saints, when we remember those we love but see no longer. And then, of course, Remembrance Sunday, where we remember those who have given their lives in the service of others. But at the moment, we're concluding our run towards Trinity, uh, the end of Trinity, 20 weeks now since Pentecost. Um, and we are continuing our journey through the Gospel of Matthew. So let's prepare to worship God. Grace, mercy and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We sing our hymn.
we come to our prayers of penitence. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We keep a short time of silence as we bring our sins before God. We pray, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We pray the Collect Prayer for the 20th Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. God, the giver of life, whose Holy Spirit wells up within your church, by the Spirit's gifts equip us to live the Gospel of Christ, and make us eager to do your will, that we may share with the whole creation the joys of eternal life, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Pippa is going to read for us, and then Chris is going to lead us in a reflection on today's reading. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered the emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. This is the word of the Lord. That gospel reading always reminds me of an incident from my childhood. I suppose I was about five at the time, and we lived in Ceylon, or Sri Lanka, as it is now. My father was vicar of Christ Church Gallface in Colombo. One Sunday morning after the service, a somewhat upset Sunday school teacher had a word with the vicar. Actually, somewhat upset is a bit of an understatement. She was both very embarrassed and furious. You see, she had spotted one of the vicar's children stealing. And what was worse? He'd stolen from the collection plate. I was duly summoned and charged with this heinous crime, which I freely admitted, but added the full story. I had my 50 cents pocket money in one pocket and my 25 cents collection in the other. During him, as we processed up and put our colour first up, but 
on returning to the pew, I discovered that I had gone to the wrong pocket and put my pocket money in the plate instead of the collection. So I rejoined the queue and collected my change. All very logical to a five-year-old. Unfortunately, the Sunday school teacher had only witnessed my second trip to the plate. A clear case of render under Caesar what is Caesar's and under God what is God's. And I use Caesar rather than emperor, which we heard read just now, because it is part of common parlance. So render under Caesar what is Caesar's and under God what is God's. Unfortunately, of course, very little in this life is quite as clear-cut as that, which is exactly what the Pharisees were playing on. In fact, Jesus' answer to the question put was, to say the least, evasive. Brilliant, yes, but he skated very neatly out of a nasty trap. Innocent, as the question may seem to us nowadays, with the first century Jew, it was a very emotive subject whether or not to pay taxes to Caesar. Disregarding the fact that the local authorities and officials added their own percentage on top of what had to be forwarded to Rome, the issue comes down to how Caesar was seen. Caesar claimed to be divine, and to have freely paid taxes to him was to acknowledge his authority. And if you acknowledged his authority, then you acknowledged his divinity, something which no true Jew could do, as it runs straight against the first commandment. So for Jesus to have given the simple answer, yes, would have been tantamount to heresy, and the Pharisees would have had a cast iron case to bring against Jesus before the supreme councils. On the other hand, to have said no, it was not lawful, would have brought trouble from another direction. Whilst denying the divinity of Caesar, it would have meant denying his authority, and all the Pharisees had to do was to report Jesus to the Romans, and they would have had a cast-iron case of treason and stirring up revolt against Jesus. So, if Jesus had given either of the answers, yes or no, he would have landed himself in big trouble, either with the Jewish authorities or with the Romans. What he did, though, appears to be a very simple answer. <coughs> Give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. However, it is not as simple as that. Whilst the coin itself is clearly fine, with the head of Jesus, uh, sorry, the head of Caesar pictured on the back, the onus was thrown back on the questioner to make up their own minds about what was Caesar's and what was God's. The question is really about the conflict of authorities, the conflict between the authorities and powers of this world and the authority of God. It is a question we still have with us today, and still a very thorny question, the apparent conflict between the moral authority of God and the temporal authority of worldly powers, or perhaps as we see it more often, the clash between what is morally right and what is legally okay. It is a question that underpins so much of the Arab-Israeli conflict. The actions of Hamas are seen as fulfilling the wishes of God. It's right in the eyes of God to kill Jews, and any collateral deaths are guaranteed a place in heaven. But under international law, it's wrong. Equally, the other way round, to kill members of Hamas to protect the Jewish state would be seen by the Jews as righteous in God's eyes. The question of the moral authority of international law is secondary. It remains an impossible conundrum. We can only pray that those attempting to broker a peaceful agreement are successful. Render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. When you are called to account for your life before God, you will be held responsible for your actions and deeds. The onus is on each and every one of us to face the problem of deciding what belongs to Caesar and what belongs to God. The small boy, there was no problem in deciding that the pocket money belonged to him and the collection to God. That doesn't really need thinking about. There are an awful lot of problems which require a lot of thought to decide between Caesar and God. 
May I suggest that the best way to solve the dilemma is to bring it before God in prayer. The pages of history are littered with countless people who have stood against the authorities of the day on moral principles. Most were strengthened by prayer. Martin Luther, Martin Luther King, Desmond Tutu, Mahatma Gandhi, to name but a few. In an ideal world, there will be no conflict between the apparent authority of the worldly powers and the authority of God. What we should be working for. Then the question of authority to pay taxes would be meaningless. There would be no conflict or moral dif difficulty in giving back to Caesar the things that belong to Caesar and to God. What belongs to God? We affirm our faith using the words of the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sue's going to lead us in our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Intercessions for the 22nd of October. Gracious Father, bring your blessing to this gathering of your people today. Speak to our hearts through the hymns we sing, the prayers that are said, and the reading and understanding of your word. Help us to go refreshed into the world, and through our lives, bring refreshment to others. Amen. Lord, we pray for all the churches in this team and in this area. We remember the work and witness of our Christian friends, wherever they are. Here we pray particularly for the ministry of David and Joe, as they seek the way forward in managing such a large benefit. We ask that you will draw all Christians in this area into a deeper understanding of being one in Christ, as we seek to meet the future needs of our community and our life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, the state of your world at the moment lies heavily on our hearts, and we feel so helpless. We pray for all those whose hearts and minds are filled with violence, for those involved in guerrilla warfare, and for terrorists, who see only the cause for which they are fighting and not the price others are paying for the destruction of all that matters to them. Have mercy on these innocent victims, we pray, in so many countries. So we also pray for those who work for peace, for those who take enormous risks to help victims of war, for those who sacrifice their own security and comfort to help the destitute. For those whose words and deeds bring hope to those who are crushed because they only see the hurt of others. May the risen Christ fill all peacemakers and ourselves with his grace. And we all pray for the victory of hope. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <coughs> Father, we praise you for your wonderful creation and for the changing seasons. Now with the glorious colours of autumn beginning to appear. We thank you that we live in such a beautiful area and a friendly town. We thank you for all who keep us safe and well and help us not to take them for granted. 
the shopkeepers, emergency services, rubbish collectors, doctor's surgeries, for the work of our schools and the support and time given by so many volunteers. Help us to show our gratitude for their service to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we bring to you members of our church family and others known to us who are having a difficult time for whatever reason. For those who are sad because someone they know has died, for those who are anxious about someone who is ill in hospital or care home, those who are lonely because someone they love is not there to care for them those who are tired because they have too much to do, those struggling with finance or unemployment, those who are unhappy because of an unkind word or action. Surround all those in need with your love, your spirit, your healing and your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift to you all those who mourn, whether the loss be recent or not. We know that grief does not follow time, and our hearts are forever changed when we lose someone we love. Comfort all who mourn, and give them the peace which passes all understanding, and allow us to know that neither life nor death can separate us from your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Go with us from this place, Lord, for we cannot serve, trust and live for you in our own strength. Go with us, Lord, for you are the true and living way. Go with us, Lord, that we may walk with you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We join our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us, praying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship today. Take care, stay safe and we'll see you again very soon. Bye bye.